All right, we've been focused on sharing some cool tips and tricks on YouTube since the beginning of 2024. And today we bring you a new tutorial, Wiggly Bones. There are multiple ways of achieving this in Blender, which we have covered before. However, with this add-on, you can do it in one easy click once you're set up. You have a lot of different settings to play around with. And that add-on is Wiggle 2. So first, head over to the description of this video and click the link for the add-on. Or head to Google, search Blender Wiggle 2, click the GitHub link and download the Wiggle 2. Pi file. Now, of course, what we're going to want to do is head into Blender. Go to Edit, then Preferences, then Add-ons. Click Install and enable it. Now all you do is add some bones with Shift plus A. Select Armature and then Single Bone. Now tab into Edit Mode and add some more bones. If you have your own armature, you can use that. Don't worry, we will be making a quick character and a cool air dancer, like the ones you see outside car dealerships. Do anything you like here. Now head into Pose Mode, select the bone you want to add the wiggly bone feature to. Hit in to bring up the side menu and then find animation. Here you'll see it says Scene Muted. Just click the eye icon to bring it alive. Enable Bone Tail. Select another bone to see a better response. Then hit the space bar to play your animation. Grab the root bone with G and drag it around and watch the magic happen. As you can see, it's pretty awesome. You can see it reacting in real time. You can then go back, adjust some parameters, play with new ones and pull it around the screen. If you notice your armature looking a little strange after you've been messing around with it, you can hit reset physics here. Okay, so let's delete this armature and move on to the next part. Let's create and rig a ragdoll character. This is a little extra tutorial for those who want to learn a quick and easy way to animate and rig. But if you want to know more about rigging, be sure to check out our IK rigging tutorial here. To create an easy character, I normally follow these steps. This isn't the way for everything, but it definitely helps you get a feel for using Blender if you're pretty new. Press Shift plus A and get yourself a cube. Tap into edit mode, press one to select vertices and press A to select all, then hit M and select at center. Now, while in edit mode, start pulling the vertices around to make a stick man. But first, let's also add some modifiers. Head over to modifiers, add a mirror modifier, a skin modifier, and start making the shape of your stick man. Oh yeah, and don't forget the subdivision and modifier and make sure you mark your root in the center of your character. To adjust your character's thickness, you can't scale vertices. You need to use Alt plus A for Windows and Option plus A for Mac. Saying that, while I'm here, let's enable our screen casting for key input so you can see everything I press on the bottom left. <sighs> Perfect, okay. Just continue the process of tweaking values with resizing and subdividing parts where you want more control of size to remove any strange shapes. And don't forget to shade smooth under the skin modifier. Don't worry if you forget, you can do that with right click once the skin modifier is applied. So let's apply the mirror and the skin modifier, but keep the subdivision in your modifiers for easier modifications to your character if needed. Now let's add an armature. Press Shift plus A and select armature, then single bone. We will leave this one where it is. Go into edit mode and press Shift plus D to duplicate the bone. Drag that up and you'll notice it's not viewable from behind the model. Go to your armature properties, viewport display and enable in front so you can see your bones. Then we need to parent these two bones. Here we click the bones in the wrong order to parent. You are supposed to click the bone you want to be your root bone last. I sort that issue out later on, but for now, just ensure you select the bone in the body first, then select the bottom bone. Press Ctrl plus P and select Keep Offset. Now, drag the bone up with G and then add more bones with E to keep things linked. I like to duplicate the bones and rotate them to fit where I'd like them. Make sure you're on the X axis on the viewport to ensure your bones rotate correctly. Do this for one side of the body on the legs and arms, then select the bone, go to Bone Properties, and just add R to the end for the right side. Do this for each bone on the arms and legs. Then press A to highlight the whole armature. Go to Armature at the top and select Symmetrize. This will then automatically add your left side bones. Tap back into Object Mode and select the mesh, then the armature. Press Ctrl plus P and select with Automatic Weights to parent the armature to your mesh. Okay, so now we are onto the wiggly bone part. Just like before, go into Pose Mode on your armature and select the bones you want to be bendy. You can select multiple bones by holding shift and dragging over the bones and enabling bone tail. You can then see all your bones selected by pressing select enabled. Here's where I fix the root bone issue. Now let's press the space bar to play our timeline, select our root bone and press G to drag your character around the screen and watch him flop around. Play around with settings and have fun with it, but also did you know we can add collision to these bones? Let's go back to object mode and bring in a cube. 
scale that to be a floor. Next, go back to your armature, pose mode, and press select enabled. Then under collision, select your new cube as collision. Now when you press play and move your character around, they will collide with the cube. But you may notice some clipping. You can adjust this by pulling your character down to the cube and slowly adjusting the radius until the legs just touch the cube surface. You can also bump up the quality to make your ragdoll look a little better. You're now at the stage where you can make a scene from this or take it into your projects. But we can also add more features to this, like wind. Back in object mode, press shift plus A, go to force field and select wind. Set the wind object wherever you like. Head to your armature again. Select all the enabled bones and find wind. Then click your wind component. Let's go to the physics properties and crank up that wind. Make sure your timeline is playing to see it in effect. Now let's try the final idea, the air dancer. Let's see how we can use wind and bone adjustments along with baking for rendering. So delete or hide your character, get yourself a cylinder and stretch it to be as big as you want. Duplicate that and make it smaller for the arms. Now loop cut the cylinders so they can bend by going into edit mode with command plus R for Mac and control plus R for Windows. Scroll your mouse wheel to add more loop cuts. Hit enter to lock those in. Now back to object mode, shade smooth, and just to make it look a little nicer, we will need to apply scale with command plus A for Mac and control plus A for Windows so our modifiers work correctly. Then add a bevel modifier, but of course this is totally up to you. If you did add modifiers, apply the modifiers by pressing command plus A for Mac and control plus A for Windows when hovering over the modifier. Then hold shift and select both meshes and press command plus J for Mac and control plus J for Windows to join them together. Now let's add an armature the same way as before and just line up the bones within the mesh. Turn on the snapping tool so the bones are evenly sized. Then select a bone close to the arms, press E and extrude off. Hold shift for better adjustments when snapping is enabled. Once that's all done, you'll need to join them together with control plus P and select with automatic weights. Uh, let's now go through the bones in pose mode and start enabling the wiggly bones and adjust the different parameters to your liking. And of course, once your bones are set up, we can attach our wind object to affect the bones. I'll speed through this process on screen as we have already done this part and good practice to go back yourself to understand the tool better. Now we can hit play and adjust the position and strength of the wind. Let's auto keyframe our wind by hitting the record icon above the timeline, pressing play, and then pressing R twice to swing it around. Now you can see your air dancer going wild. So that's it. But one last part. Let's say you're now ready to render. If you try to render out this scene, you might find that nothing happens. What you need to do is go back into your animation tab while in pose mode and go to bake wiggle. Just enable override and now you can play it back. This is now keyframed, so changing the wind and any other adjustments will not affect this mesh. To undo your bake, you need to go into pose mode, hit the snowflake icon to undo your bake and make sure override is enabled on your next bake. Anyway, let's make sure we have our baked animation and then try to render. Here we can see it working perfectly. Thanks for watching this Blender tutorial on Wiggly Bones using the Wiggle 2 add-on. We covered a lot today from basic setup to creating a fun air dancer. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and inspiring for your own projects. Remember, this will work with any of your rigs, so go see what you can create. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Blender tips and tricks. If you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comments below. Happy blending, and I'll see you in the next video.